Hello again. Uh, let's, let's see another example where we can apply the dynamic programming approach. And this is kind of a well-known problem too. It comes from a game where we have a row of coins with uh, different denominations. And then there are two players. Each player has the possibility in its turn to take one of the coins from the row. The coins can be taken from either side of the, of the row. Um, and then the idea is that uh, the player that ends up with the biggest amount of money is the one that wins. This is sort of a variation of the game. We still consider the, the row of N coins. We are going to represent the values of those coins by C1, C2, and so on. Uh, of course, they are not necessarily distinct. And the goal is to pick up the maximum amount of money. But we are going to consider the following constraint. No two coins adjacent in the initial row can be picked up. And if we do something like this, then we can basically consider the following algorithm in order to solve the problem. In order to do that, what we are going to do is to make some definitions of uh, things. So the first one is going to be uh, Fn. Fn will represent the maximum amount of money that can be picked up from the row of n coins, n coins, okay? And then, um, considering the game, let me draw a little bit here. If we have uh, the row of coins, C2, C3, C4, in the game, there are two players. Let's say, I don't know, um, Alice and Robert, okay? So if Alice is the first one to play, she may pick either C1 or C4, uh, but once she does that, let's suppose that she takes C1, then Robert can choose between C2 and C4, so he can uh, maybe take this one, and they are they are going to be interacting that way. In our case, we will also have the same idea of the of the coins, but we don't have the players. It's only one. But what is going to happen is that um, if, for instance, I take this coin from from the row, then I cannot take C3 anymore because they are adjacent. So by considering this, we will um, define the following. We will partition the coins in two groups, right? One of the groups is going to include the last coin and the other will not include the last coin, the other group, right? So if we do that, then the largest amount of money that we can get from the first group is going to be equal to Cn plus the largest amount of money I can make from the rest of the coins without the coin that is adjacent to Cn. So if I had, let's say, something like this, C1, C2, C3, and C5, four, yeah, five. Um, in the first group, basically means that I will take 
C5 with me, but then I cannot take C4 because it is adjacent to the one that I took. So the most I could get now is going to be the value of C5 that is already taken plus the maximum from what is left, which is F n minus two, because this is n, this is n minus one, and this is going to be n minus two, okay? Which is exactly what is here. And the maximum amount of money I can get if I am on considering the second group, remember that the second group does not contain CN. So in the second case, I will get, if this were the case, something like C1, C2, C3, C4, but C5 is not with me. I will not consider that because the other player took it. That is the, the idea, okay? So the most I can get is F of four. That is F of N minus one, right? So this is actually what is here. So in other words, um, and let me clean the screen so that um, it is easy. Anyways, you have the oh, you have this in the video. So um, basically, what we are saying is that um, now I could define, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. I I also need to have initial initial conditions or base uh, conditions. F of zero is going to be zero. If there are no coins, I cannot uh, get anything. And if there is only one coin, the most I can get is the, the value of that coin. Okay. So for the rest of the of the um, of the row, I will have to choose between or from taking the last coin or not taking the last coin, the one before that, okay? Now, this definition is recursive, of course, you, you can see it. I mean, in order to compute F, Fn, I need to compute Fn minus two and Fn minus one. Now, is that inefficient or not? Let's see. I copied the formula here so that it is easier for us to remember. And then let's suppose that we want to um, do this for a row with six coins, okay? So it means that I will have to choose the max from C6 plus the maximum I could get from the four remaining coins or the maximum out of five coins without the last one. Uh, but in order to solve this one, I will need to choose between C3 plus the maximum I could get. Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. This is C4. Uh, plus F two. Mm -hmm. 
or f3. And here, I will need to choose between C5 plus F3 or F4. Here, I will have to choose the maximum between C2 plus F0 or F1. Here, I will need to choose C3 plus F1 or F2. Here is going to be C4 plus F0 I'm sorry C2 mm -hmm. or F3 and so on there are some that I that I haven't finished. We can go all the way up to the bottom of the tree. Here, of course, we have C3 plus F1 or F2 and so on. Okay, I, I will stop here. In any case, what I want to show as well as we did with the Fibonacci, is, the, is that, of course, that we have computations which are repeated. Let's look at this whole branch of the tree. It's also going to be here. I haven't finished. I still have to go down, right? But, um, oh, I'm sorry. No, I made a mistake. Uh, that is oh yeah 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 that's true that's true um well the only thing that is wrong is that maybe this cloud that i am drawing is not correct because it is here <laughs> my apologies all right so okay those two are the same let's pick another color and then we can see that, for instance, this guy here is the same as this guy here. Um, and it's going to be the same as here that hasn't been finished. But the same is going to happen with other guys, like this one in red, this one in red, this one in red, this one in red, and so on. You see, there are a lot of computations here which are not needed. So the thing is, how can I improve this? We will use exactly the same idea as in Fibonacci. We can have the same definition of my function but instead of computing directly the, the, the recursive solution, what I will need to do is to check if uh, if I have f n already in my table of solutions, same idea as in the as in the Fibonacci result is going to be what is already on the table. Else I check my 
case base um, if let me move this. Come on. Oh, anyways. Okay, anyways. Okay. Um else if n equals zero result is zero if n equals one result is going to be the value of the coin one else um result is going to be the maximum between c n plus f n minus two or f n minus one And then I will have uh, solutions n equal to result so that I can perform the store step computer solve step here, store step here. And then return result. Okay, so this is sort of a pseudo code. Of course, there are a lot of things missing, including the definition of the array with the values of the coins and the other one. But um, the idea is that uh, we perform basically the same thing as in the Fibonacci um, problem. So now we are ready to program it. Let's do it. Shall we? Yeah. 